In today's video, we're gonna be making over this dresser nightstand set. This set has been previously painted. I think it's latex paint, so we're definitely gonna to have to go in and remove it. It has sort of a crackle-like effect. And this is not the original hardware, so we will be replacing this hardware with something else. Let's flip it. I use citrus strip to remove all the paint from this dresser. I just pour it on my piece and then spread it out with my brush. When I'm stripping paint off of furniture, I like to work in sections. So I'll start with the top and then I will lay it down and do the side and then the other side and then the front. When I've applied all of my citrus strip, I go ahead with my plastic wrap and I cover it. Covering it with plastic wrap, it kind of locks in the heat so it's a little bit easier for me to scrape off. Now it's been 40 minutes, so I'm gonna go in with my scraper and scrape this off. I use a plastic putty knife because I'm not sure what kind of wood is underneath and I don't wanna risk scratching it. But I immediately realize that something is going on. I notice because I'm having a hard time scraping the paint off that there's multiple layers of paint. When it doesn't come up, that's a really good indication that you're dealing with multiple layers. So here it is after I start scraping and normally it would all be gone. So that tells me I need to go in with another coat of citrus strip. Now it's been about 40 minutes again and I'm going in with my scraper and it's coming up really easy. So I'll only have to do two coats. I just followed the same process I did the first time and I'm scraping it off and it's coming off pretty easy. So I'm happy about that. Once I have all the citrus strip removed, I go in with a sponge. I use the back of it with a lot of mineral spirits just to remove any excess citrus strip or gunk. Um, it even helps to get some of that stubborn latex off. I continued the same process for the rest of this dresser. That includes the drawers. Now that everything has been citrus stripped and mineral spirit cleaned up, I go through with my sander. I'm just gonna use my orbital for all the flat parts and I'm going to remove any excess latex. There's not much on there so it's pretty easy and it goes fast. To make my life easier, I just flip the dresser over on its side and I do all my flat parts again with my orbital sander. When that's done, I go back in with, I have just a little detail sander where I can do the corners, the edges. It's also called a mouse sander. It's just a little bit smaller and it gets into all those hard to reach places. I really love my mouse sander for these type of projects. Here it is, all sanded. I mean, I completely sanded and stripped everything. Now I have to do the same for this little nightstand. And I'm gonna follow the same exact process I do for this dresser on the nightstand. I've decided to do a paint stain on this dresser, and I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Fluff. This is hands down my favorite white paint to use. You get excellent coverage with it. White is usually a hard, very tricky color to work with, but fluff makes it a lot easier. I would say my ratio for this wash is one part fluff and two parts water. I want this wash to be very, very thin because I don't wanna cover the dresser in white paint. I just want it to be very subtle. I want it to look very natural. I still want it to look like wood. I still wanna see the natural color. I just want to cover some of the unevenness in the tones. I'm just applying my wash with a brush, going back and forth as I would if it was regular paint, but it's so watered down that I get a little bit more work time. I'm not going for any special effects look, so I'm going in with my rag and just wiping it. I'm wiping all the excess off, and just a tiny bit will stay. 
and it's lightened up the wood, you can still see through it, and it sort of looks like a stain. I'm just gonna repeat this exact same process for the entire dresser and the nightstand. When I found out that this dresser was all wood like this, my project completely changed. I had no intentions of doing this. I was actually gonna use paint and cover it with a paint and then use a transfer and then everything sort of changed when I saw the wood underneath. Sometimes you just gotta go with it. Before I take any of my next steps, I need to clear coat this. And I'm using Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin. When I'm applying my clear coat, I put an even amount on my brush and then I do pretty long strokes across the top. The sealer is pretty easy to use and if I miss any spots, I'll just go back with my second coat and cover it. But for now, we're just doing one coat. and I just continue my sealer on the entire dresser and nightstand. Now I'm going in with Dixie Belle's Best Stain Wax in white. I think this is gonna look really great in all the little cracks and crevices and details. If I didn't add a sealer, the wax would hardly come off. It would have just penetrated the wood, and I don't want it to do that. I sort of just want it to be in my details. Now I just take my rag and I wipe back any of the excess wax that I don't want on there. If you're having a hard time getting that wax off, you can also use a baby wipe. Those work really, really great. This wax is oil-based, so you can't actually remove it with water, but I'm just putting a little bit on my rag because it helps me to sort of move it around. I go down to my next section and I'm gonna add wax there too and then do the same exact thing and remove it with my rag. And then I go over to the sides and any corners I see, I'm just gonna add my wax and then remove it. Now I'm gonna do stenciling on the drawer fronts and I'm using Royal Damask, it's the Bells and Whistles by Dixie Bells stencil. I just line it up and then blue tape it where I want it to be. Because this is a large stencil, I just put a drawer behind it to help it lay flat. Up 
a lot of times when you're using a stencil, it can sort of puff up and then you can get bleed through underneath. So I love to add a sealer and I'm using my Dixie Bells clear coat in satin for this. I'm just painting it over the stencil. I want it to go underneath too, so I'm sort of pushing it underneath with my brush and this will act as a barrier when you're putting your color on so that you don't really get bleed through. I mean, you might get a little bit, but it's pretty minimal. The other reason I love using a clear coat before stenciling is because it acts like a glue. So instead of my stencil puffing up, now it's sticking to the drawer and it's clear so you'll never see it. I let it dry for about 15 minutes before I add my paint. I'm using Dixie Belle's fluff for the stenciling. I just use a dabbing sponge to apply the paint. So now that I have my sealer underneath and it's pretty dry, I really have no worries about that bleed through. It's really like a just reassurance for me and that's why I do it. It's an extra step and it takes a little bit longer, but for me it's worth it. I don't want to have to worry that it's going to bleed underneath, you know, after you've done so much work. Be careful not to load your sponge with a ton of paint. It will end up going underneath the stencil and pushing that sealer out anyway if you use too much. So you just kind of want to use a medium amount and that's why I use the cap of my container, I'll just push my sponge on there to remove any excess. And there it is, we really don't have any bleed through and I think it looks great. So I'm gonna continue on with the second part of the pattern. I wait about 15 minutes for the paint to dry before I put my stencil over it. And then I line up the second row because that will continue the pattern. Just be careful when you're putting blue tape on that your paint is really dry or you'll smudge it. Now I just continue the same exact process and I'm gonna do this on all of the drawers. We're gonna go in with the same stencil and we're gonna stencil the sides. There's five columns and I only really have room for four, so I'm gonna take my blue tape and just tape that fifth column off so when I'm dabbing, I don't get my paint on the fifth column. Then I'm going in just like I did with the drawers and I'm adding my clear coat. The top and bottom rows of my stencil are raised, so I have to be careful and I have to really just push that sealer underneath them. I'll even push it down with my fingers as best as I can. Once I let my fingers go, I know it's gonna raise again, but that's okay because I've pushed the sealer under. I wait about 15 minutes again for this stencil to dry and then I go in with my dabbing sponge and I'm gonna add my fluff. and I'm gonna be sure to push down on my top and bottom rows. So again, because we added the sealer first, I'm pretty confident that I'm not gonna have any bleed through. 
When I finish all my stenciling on the dresser, I go back with my Dixie Bells clear coat in satin and I seal the entire dresser and nightstand. Now for the last step, the hardware, I'm going in with fluff once again. I'm just going to use my dabbing brush and dab the fluff onto the hardware. I want to keep the dark details in there, that's why I'm not using slick stick first. I don't want this to be completely white or my piece will look washed out. We need some sort of depth in there and I think this will be the perfect solution. Because I've only used chalk paint over my hardware, I need to go in with a heavy duty sealer. So I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. It'll be the perfect sealer. And I'll do two coats, waiting for it to dry in between coats. Just a reminder of what it looked like before. And here's the after. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you next time.